The Home Health Quality Improvement National Campaign welcomes you to this short multimedia module, Diabetes Self-Management Education Programs and Benefits. Diabetes Self-Management Education, or DSME, is an integral part of empowering the patient to take control of their health care and improve outcomes. According to the American Association of Diabetes Educators and the American Diabetes Association, DSME programs support the ongoing process of facilitating the knowledge, skills, and ability necessary for prediabetes and diabetes self-care. This process incorporates the needs, goals, and life experiences of the person with diabetes or prediabetes and is guided by evidence-based standards. The overall objectives of DSME are to support informed decision-making, self-care behaviors, problem-solving, and active collaboration with the healthcare team, and to improve clinical outcomes, health status, and quality of life. To read the specific national standards for DSME, see the link at the end of this module. We are going to talk about the Medicare benefit options first. If your diabetic patient has a private insurer, you will have to check with each individual plan for coverage and specifications. A Medicare beneficiary must have met specific criteria to have a diabetes diagnosis for these benefits. The definition states that a person must have one or any of the following criteria. Fasting blood glucose, 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher on two separate occasions. A two-hour post-glucose challenge of 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher on two separate occasions. And a random blood glucose level over 200 milligrams per deciliter or a person with symptoms of uncontrolled diabetes. Notice that the Medicare criteria does not include diagnosis by A1C at this time. Medicare does not currently cover prediabetes, but does intend to modify the rule and extend coverage. Let's now start to look at different DSME options. On this illustration, you see that there are some DSME programs that are covered under the Medicare benefit. There are also programs that are approved by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, known as CMS, but there is not payment for the organizations providing the class. We are going to start on the left with the Medicare Benefit Programs. You can see that there are different programs and we will be highlighting key information for each. The first is Diabetes Self-Management Training, or DSMT. Medicare will cover 80% of DSMT, but the beneficiary will have to pay a 20% copay. Check with the organization, but the copays are minimal since the billing rates are regulated by Medicare. The DSMT referral must come from a physician or a qualified non-physician practitioner, such as a physician assistant, nurse practitioner, registered dietitian, or pharmacist. Soon, certified diabetes educators, also known as CDEs, will be allowed to make referrals. The referring provider must be treating the patient's diabetes. Now that we know who can refer beneficiaries to DSMT, we need to discuss exactly what benefits are covered by Medicare. Medicare Part B covers 10 hours of initial training. Medicare will typically pay for one hour of individual training and the other nine hours in a group setting. There is no specific curriculum that is required. However, a good practice would be to ensure the program is evidence-based. Classes are to be taught by a licensed healthcare provider, such as a certified diabetes educator, registered nurse, registered dietitian, or pharmacist. Community healthcare workers can be part of the healthcare team, but cannot lead the team. Providers must be recognized as a certified diabetes center by Medicare. This ensures that they are using the ADA recognized program or the AADE accredited program. Diabetes self-management education is necessary and effective. However, it does not guarantee a lifetime of effective diabetes care. Some research suggests initial improvement begins to diminish six months after initial diabetes classes. The national standards now includes diabetes self-management support, or what is called DSMS. The AADE ADA definition for DSMS 
is activities that assist the person with prediabetes and diabetes in implementing and sustaining the behaviors needed to manage conditions on an ongoing basis beyond the outside of formal self-management training. The type of support provided can be behavioral, educational, psychosocial, or clinical. The Diabetes Self-Management Support, or DSMS, Medicare benefit includes all of the same regulation as to who can make referrals, teach classes, as well as the 20% copay for the classes. The difference for DSMS is that Medicare will pay for a two-hour follow-up. This may be provided in either a group or on an individual basis. The classes can be furnished any time in a calendar year after a year in which the beneficiary completes the initial training. So when thinking of DSMS, look at it as if it is a personalized follow-up plan for your patient. Have them attend a diabetes support group in the area. Also, if you think that they need to start an exercise program, refer them to an appropriate program and ensure the results are documented. There is still one more Medicare benefit, and it is called Medical Nutrition Therapy, or MNT. This benefit is a comprehensive nutritional therapy service provided to Medicare beneficiaries with a diagnosis of either diabetes or renal disease. There is no longer a copay for this benefit. A physician who is treating the disease must make the referral and the classes must be taught by a registered dietitian. In the initial year, the beneficiary can receive up to three hours of training. Subsequent years, the person can have up to two hours of training each year. Can patients receive both DSMT and MNT? Yes, a beneficiary can receive the full 10 hours of initial DSMT and the full three hours of MNT, but DSMT and MNT cannot occur on the same date of service. In subsequent years, the beneficiary can receive two hours of DSMT with a referral and two hours of MNT with a referral. All of this information is certainly a lot to digest. There are informational sheets available for all of the programs that were just mentioned. A link to these sheets will be provided at the end of this module. Now we are going to move on to the DSME programs that are not reimbursable under the Medicare benefits. CMS created a Diabetes Disparities Education Program, which is called Everyone with Diabetes Counts Program, or EDC. The Affordable Care Act mandates development of programs to address, identify, and reduce health care disparities among at-risk populations. Some of the vulnerable populations include people who are duly eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, minorities, and or rural populations. Did you know African Americans are one to two times more likely to have diabetes than Caucasians? Hispanic and Latinos have a higher prevalence of diabetes than Caucasians. American Indians and Native Americans' diabetes rate is almost three times higher than the overall rate. Also, Asian and Pacific Islander populations have a higher prevalence of diabetes than Caucasian populations. Diabetes is more common among beneficiaries living in a rural area than those in an urban area by more than 3%. The Everyone with Diabetes Counts Program, or EDC, began in 2008 as a pilot in Florida and is now the largest national Medicare diabetes self-management education program. Each of the state's Quality Improvement Organization, or QIOs, provide DSME classes in areas of vulnerability. The QIOs provide educational classes and support healthcare organizations with training to provide their own DSME or process to routinely refer to DSME programs within the community. The EDC programs are required to use evidence-based DSME program curriculum such as the Diabetes Education Empowerment Program called DEEP or the Stanford Living a Healthy Life Program. 
The goals of EDC are to improve health literacy and quality of care among Medicare and duly eligible Medicare beneficiaries with pre-diabetes and diabetes in minority and rural populations. Another goal of EDC is to decrease the disparity of diabetes testing in minority vulnerable populations by improving the frequency of testing for hemoglobin A1C, foot exams, eye exams, blood pressure monitoring, lipid profiles, which all will help to improve diabetes clinical outcomes. We hope that you have learned a little bit more about the various types of DSME programs available. You can read more in HHQI's Disease Management Diabetes Best Practice Intervention Package that is available at www.homehealthquality.org under the Education and BPIP tabs. Also, you can read more about the EDC program and obtain DSME tip sheets on the various benefits and programs. You can find them at www.qioprogram.org backslash EDC. Click on the provider tabs and then the resources. If you have any questions, please contact your state quality improvement organization. You can locate your QIO's name and phone number by going to www.qioprogram.org. A link to the National Standards for Diabetes Self-Management Education and Support is available at www.care.diabetesjournals.org. There are so many other ways to encourage, support, and enhance patient participation and engagement. Discuss with your patients the DSME options that they have in their area and locate one that is culturally appropriate for them in their community. We hope that you will integrate DSME education into your discharge planning and remember to educate patients on diabetes self-management support where they can get additional hours every subsequent year. HHQI would like to thank you for taking time to learn more about diabetes self-management programs and benefits. This material was prepared by Quality Insights, the Medicare Quality Innovation Network, Quality Improvement Organization, supporting the Home Health Quality Improvement National Campaign under contract with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, an agency of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The views presented do not necessarily reflect CMS policy. Publication number 11, Scope of Work, WVHHMMD 02516E.